How's it going out there? Welcome to my H2 Tech video. Today I'm going to be going over the Galaxy S5 for beginners. This is going to be a quick video and I just want to go over uh, how to use the phone and just some basic information that you'll need so you can enjoy your new phone. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first things first, I just want to go over the button. So on the left side we have our volume up and our volume down. And at the top we have our headphone jack so you can plug in earphones, listen to music. The bottom you do have um, this little uh, special door here and this is where you plug in your charger. Uh, now you always want to make sure you put this little door back on when you're finished. Uh, the uh, S5 is water resistant uh, but you have to make sure this is closed. If this is open and it's exposed to water you're going to have a problem. So it's only water resistant when this is closed. Okay. Next we do have on the right side we have our standby power button. If you do hold down the button for 10 seconds it will turn the phone off automatically or we can just hold it down for a quick second and it will prompt our device options. So this is how you turn the phone off, how you put it in airplane mode or how you do a quick restart. At the bottom here you also have a mute and our vibration. So these are just some quick shortcuts just by holding down the uh, standby button right here. Uh, if you do hit it quick it will just turn your screen off as well. See that? And now we're back on and we just slide to turn it on. Now one more thing you'll notice if I put it to sleep and turn it back on, um, if I put my finger on the camera icon and just slide up, it will automatically prompt the camera to open up. So that's just a cool little shortcut you have right from the home screen. All right, so now that we've gone over that, let's go over our buttons at the bottom here. So there's three key buttons that are on the S5. Uh, first we have our home button, which is right in the center. And the way the home button works is when you're in an app, so for example, if I'm in the Play Store, this is where you download apps. And if I want to go back to the main screen, I'm just going to hit that home button one time and it takes me right back here. So no matter what app you're in, if I'm in the calling app, if I hit that uh, home button, it's going to always take me back to my home screen. So that's just kind of what that's for. It does serve two other functions. One is if you hold down the button, it will launch what's called Google Now. And what Google Now does is it'll uh, use your Google searches to make recommendations. So if you put in your address, it'll let you know how much time it takes to get home from where you are. You can search for sports teams. Like if you search for the Lakers one time, next time you go back to it, it'll show you when they play again. Or if they're playing right now, it'll show what the score of the game is. So uh, this makes all these intuitive recommendations to kind of help make your life a little bit easier. And to get out of that, we're going to hit the button one time, home button, and we're back. All right, the third thing it does is if you hit it twice, so if you go click, click, it will launch S-Voice. And S-Voice is like the Android version of Siri. And with S-Voice, you can ask it to open certain apps. You can ask it to navigate to certain places. Um, you can also ask it to play music. It's very intuitive, and when you open it up, there's a list of all the different commands you can use to um, uh, use voice commands. So we're going to close that for now. Just hit the home button again, and now we're back to our home screen. So that's our home button for you. Next to the left, we have what's called our recent apps button. So if we tap that, it will show you... Uh, all the current apps that are running. So right now I open the Play Store, I open the phone app, so you can see them all in this icon right here. Now, why would you use this? Well, you don't want to have too many things running at one time because this can slow down your phone or drain the battery quicker. So if you know you've opened a few things, if we just tap that menu button, or excuse me, that uh, recent apps button, and then you hit this button right here, it will close all the apps that we're currently running. So if we go back, they're all closed. See that? So what I recommend is at least once or twice a day, if you've been using the phone a lot, hit your recent apps and just go ahead and close out just to make sure you don't have any apps that are constantly running which would be draining your battery. Now there's another way to close apps and let me show you how to do that. So let's say I go to the internet and then I go home. Now the internet is still running, it's just running in the background now. Let me open up one more app here and open this all right so if we hit our recent apps button again now those two apps are running now maybe you want to keep the internet open because you're reading an article but you're finished using the phone app all I do is just slide and that goes away so you can keep open the important 
app that you're still using, you can close out other things just by swiping. All right, now uh, one other key thing, just to show you, let's go to text messages. This recent app button also serves a few other functions. So if you're in an app, if you hold down on the recent apps button, it will act as a menu button. So watch this, I'm gonna hold down and it automatically launches the menu option. So if you're in other apps, just hold down that recent apps button and it will all automatically launch the settings. So that's just another cool shortcut. Now our next thing we have is on the right, to the right of this button is our back button. So what the back button does is it always takes you back one step. For example, if I open an app and I hit the back button, it'll take me out of it. Now if I open this app again, and let's say I tap apps, right? So I opened it and then I hit apps. If I hit the back button, it takes me back one step. So I'm still in the app, but it took me back one step. If I hit it again, now I'm out of it. So think of this as just like a back button. You know when you're on the internet and you click a website and you use the wrong website, the back button takes you back one step. So that's just pretty much what that does. It also serves one other purpose. If you hold down on it, it will launch what's called your multi uh, window, which is allows you to have multiple apps open at once. We're not gonna get too deep into that because that's more of an advanced feature, but if you look further down in our beginner series, we will have a video on using multi window. The last, last two things I wanna show you are how to get to all the other apps on the phone. If you notice right now, we have a couple of different pages here of different things, but you don't see all the apps that are running on the phone at this time. So to get to all your apps, you're gonna go to the bottom right where it says apps. Tap right there. And this is where you can see all the apps that are running on the phone. Kind of cool. It hides them for you so you can only get to them when you want to see them. And that apps section is always right there. The last thing you want to go over, if we swipe from the top, see where it says Samsung? This brings up what's called your notification panel. And what this has are shortcuts to turn certain things on and off quickly without having to go to the settings. So for example, if you want to turn on Wi-Fi, uh, to connect at your house, if you want to turn on GPS, to, obviously to navigate somewhere. Um, you want to make sure it's green. If it's not green, for example, Bluetooth is turned off because it's gray. So when it's lit up, that means it's currently running. And if it's not lit up, it means it's not running. You can also swipe to the left to get to more options. You see that? So these are all different little shortcuts that you have access to right from your notification panel. And as you can see down here, you have what are called notifications. So here, you can actually see different activity that's happening with the phone. For example, if someone sends you a text message or an email, if you just swipe from the top, this is where you can read or see a preview of those messages. Also, if an app is updated or if someone's trying to send you something or contact you or you have a missed call, it'll all show up in this notification section. You also have your uh, brightness meter to control how bright or dark the screen is, or you can put it on auto depending on if you want it to automatically adjust for you. You also have a shortcut up here to get right to your settings menu right there. And we have this option as well, which will show you more switches you have access to. So, and one final thing, if you take two fingers and swipe from the top, it will also bring up that same menu with all your switches from the top. So you guys, this has been the uh, Galaxy S5 for beginners. We tried to keep it very simple just to help out you first time users and we hope you found this helpful. Check out part two, we're gonna go over some helpful tweaks to make on the phone, showing you how to keep your screen bright a lot longer. We're gonna show you how to do some cool things with your text messages and just some other basic tweaks to help you use the phone and really enjoy it to its fullest potential. Hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share the video if you did find it helpful. Subscribe to HG Tech videos and have a good one.